But my argument is just because we see this evidence from 50,000 years ago of these incredible cave paintings doesn't mean that's when humans got smart, right? Mm. I mean, we've had this sized brain for at least 300,000 years based on fossil evidence, potentially up to a million years. Just because we see cave paintings of incredible sophistication from 50,000 years ago doesn't mean that... You know, I think when you look at the climatic history of the Earth, there are these periods, these warm periods, where humanity could easily have flourished. And then you look at the, the crashes, the, these moments in the Earth's climatic history, which had the potential to completely wipe out massive amounts of humans. And we know that that happened. So it's very interesting. And I always look at those warm periods and think what could have happened in those warm periods and what could have happened when those warm periods ended and we crashed into ice ages and how must that have affected human populations. And yeah, it's something I, I dwell on a lot. And yeah, I find it very interesting. Yeah. A lot of directions to go here, but I do want to. I, I do want to touch the the point you made about you believing that it's around three hundred thousand years that we've had this type of you know cranial ability, or brain ability. Why why did you land on that specific time range? Well, that's the oldest modern human fossils, right? Three hundred thousand years, the ones we were just speaking about. Mm. But then you have this skull here, which is not homo sapien, but it's the same size brain case. It's a large brain hominin. And that's been around for, if these results are correct, for a million years. So it's potential that humans with, you know, the brain the size of ours has been around for that amount of time. Now, there's a big debate in kind of anthropology and history of when intelligence emerged. So the traditional view was always that intelligence didn't emerge till relatively recently. Um, and the view always was until the last few decades that prehistoric humans were effectively stupid. <laughs> so have, have you ever read the book Sapiens? You've all know Harari? That's the one, yeah. Yeah, I've read, I don't think I've read the whole thing, but I've definitely read some of that because I've owned that for years on my Kindle. It's a good book and it does a really good job of speaking about the importance of symbolic intelligence to us as a species and why that's been such a evolutionary advantage. Um, but what it does do is it promotes this idea that this intelligence didn't emerge until about 50,000 years ago. And what does he base that on? Basically, we have these cave paintings in Europe that were painted around that date. Mm. And that evidence, and it's not just him, he's kind of collecting the kind of thoughts of academia and presenting it to a layman audience. So it's not his argument, but he's kind of presenting what used to be, I think this is changing now, but what used to be the the mainstream argument for human intelligence, which is that it didn't emerge until around 50,000 years ago when Homo sapiens apparently migrated out of Africa. At least that's the current story. We had mm. migrated out of Africa at that point and we created all these beautiful cave paintings in Europe, which are in undeniably incredible. Hey guys, if you haven't already subscribed, please hit that subscribe button. It's a huge, huge help. Thank you. But my argument is just because we see this evidence from 50,000 years ago of these incredible cave paintings doesn't mean that's when humans got smart, right? Mm. I mean, we've had this sized brain for at least 300,000 years based on fossil evidence, potentially up to a million years. Just because we see cave paintings of incredible sophistication from 50,000 years ago doesn't mean that that's when humans got smart. So this is the cognitive revolution argument, right? That humans only got smart at this date. But I would argue that in recent decades, loads and loads of evidence has come out to suggest that humans have had these cognitive cap capabilities for way longer. And not just Homo sapiens, but also our sister species like Neanderthals and Denisovans, because there's so much evidence that these humans were doing incredible things. Like we have clear signs of symbolic behavior that are much older than this. There's a site in South Africa called Blombos Cave, which has these like ornaments that humans created 100,000 years ago. So that's almost twice as old as this so-called cognitive revolution happened. And there's even older examples. There's these uh, eagle claw talon jewelry, uh, like necklaces made by Neanderthals from about 130,000 years ago that were found in uh, Croatia. Neanderthals made these underground stone circles out of stalagmites, which why would you do that if you don't have symbolic intelligence, right? You wouldn't start building stone circles if, and like, that's kind of, that's the sim. I, think, I feel like I need to probably explain what symbolic intelligence is and why that's Please. an important thing. So, and Sapiens does a really good job of explaining this. I'll give Sapiens that because symbolic intelligence has allowed our species to thrive in many ways. So the idea is that because we can think in the abstract, Right, so we can kind of create these concepts that aren't real, but we all collectively agree on them. So 
what's an example? Um, <laughs> maybe like, maybe like a country, right? Like so the United States, we're in the United States right now, right? And we both believe that. Mm -hmm. We both believe in the existence of the United States, but the United States isn't a real thing. You can't- It's a story. It's a story, exactly. You can't touch the United States. If I go outside the studio right now and touch the ground, I'm not touching the United States. I'm just touching mm -hmm. some ground, but because we all agree that you know, the United States is a thing, it allows us to cooperate in massive groups. So you have like the whole of, you know, the US army or something, yes. all believe in the United States. So they all cooperate in a huge group of humans and that allows us to get things done. And so that's the kind of power of symbolic intelligence. We believe these shared myths and that allows us to cooperate in massive groups and no other animal can really do that. You don't get like chimps that all believe in like the chimp nation and like collectively, you know, cooperate in groups of thousands of chimps. Like chimps can only really cooperate in bands of about 50 chimps. Mm. And then they split, they split into different groups because they can't kind of create a, a myth to, to kind of base themselves around and work in a massive group. That's interesting though, just strictly on like this, the symbolism of the math though too. I can't remember if it's 50 or a hundred, but the difference is gonna be minimal here. If you've ever read Tribe by Sebastian Younger, he talks about how, you know, there's a certain mathematical number to which you can actually exist where the tribe all works together. And he was talking about humans in this case. Mm -hmm. So meaning when it goes beyond that, it starts to thread off into different ideologies and different people with different, you know, I guess priorities. And then you look at regular sociologists who are going to talk to you about like the total number of real close relationships a human being is capable of having on an individual basis. It's also somewhere in that neighborhood, like a hundred or something like that. And so the fact that chimps can't cooperate beyond 50 is interesting because even if those numbers of like 50 to 100 for us humans to be able to either form relationships or stick in one tribe are similar, we are able to cooperate on a macro level, symbolically to use your term, at a way bigger number just to you know be able to agree like, you know what? Yeah, there's a border here. Exactly. That's our country. That's pretty crazy. It's just like, it's basically one revolution past where chimps are. That's it. But it makes all the difference in the world. Exactly. And I really, I support that argument made by books like Sapiens that that is such an evolutionary advantage for our species because it's it's everywhere. You I mean, you look at like companies like Apple. Apple has thousands, tens of thousands of people all over the globe, all cooperating together because they all believe in the existence of the company Apple, which isn't right. a real thing. You can't fucking touch Apple. You can't, there, you can't, there is no real thing Apple because we all believe in it. We can cooperate in these massive groups. That's right. So that's what symbolic intelligence is. That's why it's important. The theory always was that we didn't have this until about 50 to 60,000 years ago. And the evidence of why that emerged at that point was purely based on these cave paintings. Yeah, that's kind of wild. It's not really much evidence, is it? No. And it's also like that's evidence that just was put in a place where it didn't get destroyed. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. You know, think of all the things that have happened since then from a planetary level that could have destroyed basically all evidence and, you know, leave an outlier like that. Yeah. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't measure it that way either. That's interesting though, that like, how, what's the evidence that those cave paintings meant that those particular human beings, whether they were the oldest or not, sounds like they weren't, but What's the evidence there for that those paintings were made shortly after those people left Africa? Like, how do we know that? Well, that's the date that we have for the like the mass migration out of Africa is around 60,000 years ago. So it's called the out of Africa migration. And it's Can we pull that up? It's when humans, now what do we do? So this is the thing with out of Africa is there are homo sapiens that we found that are older than this date outside Africa. But the idea is that that's when we kind of came out of Africa and survived. So yeah, 60,000 years ago, yeah. Um, the out of Africa migration is the theory that all modern humans originated in Africa and later spread to the rest of the world in multiple waves, with the most successful wave beginning around 60,000 years ago. Just like you said, this migration was likely driven by climate changes and followed routes through the Middle East, leading to the eventual settlement of Europe, Asia, and Australia. Early migrants were adaptable hunter-gatherers who used their skills to survive and spread across different environments. And then they have a video of it here. Thank you guys for watching the episode. If you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button and smash that like button on the video. They're both a huge, huge help. And if you would like to follow me on Instagram and X, those links are in my description below.